Good morning and welcome to Cumber Methodist Online. We're really glad that you could join with us today, whether that's at our normal church time of 10.30 or at a time that's more suitable to yourself through Facebook, YouTube or on our service telephone line. If you don't regularly worship with us in Cumber, you're especially welcome today. If you have any questions about the church or if you'd like to chat with someone about anything that has been said, you can contact us by email on cumber.methodist at outlook.com or by mobile on 07845479697. The great news this morning is that the doors of the building will be reopened next Sunday morning for worship at 10.30 a.m. Our services will be live streamed from the church building to YouTube and a link to this will be on our church Facebook page. So this means that you can either gather with us in the building for 10.30 or watch at home. Unfortunately, there is no way we can upload to the telephone line at the same time. So the service will be available on our telephone service line from Monday lunchtime from now on. I am sorry that it won't be available sooner but we will endeavour to get it uploaded as soon as possible on a Monday morning. God has called us to live in community, worshipping together as his people. But we realise that for some of you, you may not be able yet to join with us, either for health reasons or because you simply feel uneasy about being in a building with other people. If you're unable to get out and about at the minute and you're feeling disconnected or lonely, Please do not hesitate to contact your care coordinator, care coordinator from Church Council or myself directly. I would ask for your patience as we negotiate the path ahead and the new technology required to make it all work. It may take a few attempts to get everything sorted as we start to live stream, but please be assured that we as a team are trying our best. Please remember if you are joining with us next week, that you must keep two metres social distance between yourself and anyone from another household at all times. This includes the car park, in the foyer, in church itself. We ask that you sanitise your hands on the way into church. There is a sanitiser outside the toilets. And again, on the way back out of church, and there is a sanitiser on the uh, wall of the shell room. Please fill up the seats from the front of the church. Bill Campbell, our COVID-19 coordinator, will be directing people to their seats. And as you see from the most recent photograph, everywhere has two seats together now, but some are marked as not to be used. Masks must be worn or a visor unless you're exempt for medical purposes. The great news is that that means that we're allowed to sing as well. Your attendance to the church will be recorded and kept on file for three weeks so that if necessary, we can contact you in the unfortunate event that someone tests positive for COVID-19. So I'd ask if you or anyone that you've been in contact has symptoms of COVID-19, please watch the service from home to keep yourself and the rest of the congregation safe. We do all of these measures, not because it just keeps us safe, but because it's a practical way to demonstrate God's command to love our neighbour as ourselves. And so we want to keep everyone safe. It's also advised that we don't pass an offering pit around the congregation, but there will be a basket on your way out for anyone who wishes to give an offering. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for all your financial commitment over the past months. Many of you have moved to online giving whilst others have posted checks or dropped off envelopes. Please be assured that Church Council are really appreciative of your continued financial support for the work of God for Cumber Methodist Church. We hope to start small groups soon, which will be held in the Shell Room and will comprise of Bible study, prayer and fellowship. Initially, we'll be looking deeper into our Sunday morning series as we explore further how to be calm in a chaotic world. This will include a 20 minute, 20 minute video clip by Max Lucado and group discussion. As numbers are limited, if you would like to be part of a Bible study group, please let Chris Matheson, Sylvia McKnight or myself know in the next two weeks so that we can organise those groups. 
There will be an opportunity for both daytime and evening groups. So please let us know what suits you best. You'll be glad to hear, I think that's all the announcements for this morning. So let's pause for a moment, focus our minds on Christ and prepare our hearts for worship. Let us hear the words of Psalm 103. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like eagles. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who carry out his plans. Listen for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord, everything he has created, everything in all his kingdom. Let all that I am praise the Lord. We join together in praising the Lord as we sing the beautiful hymn, 10,000 Reasons.
Let us pray. Lord, at the start of this new day, your day, we join together again as your people to sing your songs of praise, to learn from your word and to talk to you in prayer. Lord, we want to thank you that you didn't create us and then abandon us, but that your greatest desire is to be in living relationship with us. We thank you, Lord, for the words of this great psalm we've just heard and the words we have sang, which reminded us that there are so many reasons for us to bless and praise you, Lord. This morning, help us to focus on you, to stop thinking of all the other things that can so easily distract us, but help us to focus on you and your goodness towards us. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. For you alone are worthy, Lord. Amen. Let us sing again together a song that reminds us of God's greatness and helps us to worship him, our God who is seated on his throne. Let us join together as we sing, Behold our God. i 
Let us come before the Holy God we've just been singing about and confess our sins. Let us pray. Living one, we are your disciples, your hands and feet in the world today. In this time when we're staying away from one another, we sometimes feel extremely burdened as if under a great weight. Truthfully, we have frequently been tempted to turn to fear and doubt, not trusting in your presence. We've narrowed our vision and avoided our responsibility to continue to care for others in our community and across the globe. And at times we have become easily angered with the uncertainty and changes we face. We have narrowed our hearts and thought only of ourselves and our desire for ease and certainty. We have felt burdened and at times overwhelmed. Lord, in this time of emptiness and confusion, fill us with the stability of faith and the clarity of discipleship. Remind us that we are your beloved, united by love and the choice each of us has made to follow Jesus, to do as Jesus would do. Forgive us, Lord, for our words and actions which have pulled down rather than built up. For when times when our omission to do something has robbed someone of a blessing that you wanted to give to them. Forgive us, God, for the times that the heaviness of our anxiety has become a barrier to worship and has stopped us from rejoicing in your name. Forgive us, Lord, and free us from our sinful habits, our anxiety, our fears and our selfishness, so that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Today we continue our series entitled Calm in a Chaotic World, based on the words of Philippians 4, 4 to 9. Can I encourage you to not just listen to these words as Sarah reads them to us, but to commit to learning them as we study them week by week. Let us hear again Philippians 4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice! Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Thank you, sir. Before we explore these verses further, we join together to sing, acknowledging through our words that we are not on our own and that our hope is found only in Jesus. Let us sing together, yet not I, but through Christ in me. I can 
sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side the Savior he will say, I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon, and he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been. Have you ever had one of those days? You switched off the alarm instead of snoozing it. You wake up half an hour later and you jump out of bed only to stub your toe on the bedside table. Someone else in the family has used all the hot water and there's no time to wait for it to warm. And so you decide a cold shower is better than no shower at this stage. Despite your best efforts, you miss the bus and have to wait 15 minutes until the next one. And so, by the time you make it into work, your anxiety levels are past boiling point. And unfortunately, the first person you meet who didn't do the job that you asked them to, or who didn't have the answer you needed, gets the brunt of your anxiety, which spills out in a torrid of angry words and unpleasant language. Or perhaps for you, it's a day spent in the house with too many nuisance calls, too many small, almost insignificant things going wrong. Yet as each one builds on the previous one, the mountain of anxiety just grows until you feel like you just can't take it anymore. 
And the thing that breaks you is a loved one saying something offhand, meaning no malice or hurt, but because of the mountain of pent up anxiety, the volcano erupts into a flow of angry words. It's only later as you sit and reflect on your behavior, you realize that that person didn't deserve any of what you said, or even worse, how you said it. Paul in our verses in Philippians, not only tells us to rejoice in the Lord, the phrase that we looked at last week, but he also instructs us, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. The Greek word translated here as gentleness means fair, mild, gentle, suitable behavior. In Gerard Kittle's Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, he talks of this verse and he says, the Greek word translated here as gentleness describes a temperament that is seasoned and mature. A temperament that is seasoned and mature. How is your gentleness today? Perhaps on a day-to-day -day basis, you are a pretty gentle, file, fair, mild sort of person. But what happens on those days that the anxiety levels start to soar and things just don't go your way? The voice translation of scripture puts Philippians 4 this way. Keep your gentle nature so that all people will know what it looks like to walk in his footsteps. The Lord is ever present with us. I find this translation a, a real challenge. Surely it's not too big a deal if I lose my cool every now and again. I only ever do it when I feel I'm justified or at least when I think I'm justified. But the challenge of this verse tells you why you should be gentle. So that all people will know what it looks like to walk in God's footsteps. Wow, that's a reality check, isn't it? Our actions and reactions speak to others of what it is to walk in the footsteps of Christ. Now there's a challenge for us today. Are you the gentle, fair, mild person in the room when the anxiety levels of everyone else are high? Are you the person who keeps their cool, who chooses their words carefully, who controls the volume of their voice, speaks words that demonstrate a temperament that is seasoned and mature? Max Lucado says in his book, Anxious for Nothing, the contagiously calm person is the one who reminds others God is in control. I know we all want to be that person, but the truth is not many of us are. So how do we change? How do we become that gentle person? Well, the rest of this verse tells us, it says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Imagine the scene with me for just a moment. It's morning time in a bustling, busy household. There's an independent little child who has just started primary two and is getting ready for school. Uniform on, breakfast eaten and school bag sorted. Only thing left is to put on her shoes. She spent the whole summer learning how to tie her own laces and takes great pride in having her big girl shoes. No more slip-ons for her. She sits down on the bottom step of the stairs to put on her shoes. But this time, things don't go right. After two, maybe three attempts, instead of a bow, she ends up with a knot. Knowing that her time to walk to school is getting closer, that her siblings are all ready and waiting for her, panic starts to set in as she tries again, but no joy. And so she ends up in floods of tears, panicking that she will be late for school, muttering that she doesn't like these shoes anyway, and ends up sobbing uncontrollably. But in the midst of her anxiety, she forgot one vital thing. Her dad was standing right beside her. This job won't be difficult for him. He's had years of practice and she just never asked him for help. This childlike example is a truthful picture of us. 
So often we forget the latter part of this verse. The Lord is near. All this child had to do was ask her dad for help, to remember she was not alone, he was near. And so it is for us. You are not on your own. Your heavenly father is near and we only need to ask for his help. So often throughout scripture, we hear God reminding his people. To Abraham, God said, do not be afraid. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. To Hagar, on the run, the angel of the Lord announced, do not be afraid. God has heard you. When God appeared to Isaac, he said, do not be afraid, for I am with you. And to Joshua, when he had to take over the great um, role that Moses had been doing, God said to him, Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And so God's promise to be with us, to be near us, to hear us, continues throughout the Old Testament. And then in the very first chapter of the first book in the New Testament, we read these beautiful words. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us? How amazing. Every minute of every day, our Heavenly Father with us. It's not just you and me, but that forgets this truth. The disciples were also guilty of forgetting who it was that was with them. Let us hear again the well-known story of the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Some time after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee that is, the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up, he saw a great crowd coming towards him he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about five thousand of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all eaten, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. A well-known story of a great miracle of Jesus, but I want us to focus on the disciples in this story for just a moment. These twelve guys had been following Jesus for quite a while now. They had witnessed healings, stormy seas becoming calm, the dead raised to life, Evil spirits cast out, water changed into wine. All these miracles have been done with the same Jesus who's standing on the hillside with them. The same Jesus who turns to Philip and asks the question, where shall we buy food for these people to eat? 
the next verse tells us that Jesus asked this only to test him. And did Philip pass the test? No. In his short-sightedness, Philip sees a problem. 5,000 men plus women and children, food bill, well that's at least eight months wages. And we're in a city, never mind out in the countryside, where do you have all that food available? How is this ever going to happen? So what did the disciples have to offer? Well, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, speaks up and says, there's a boy here with five loaves and two fish. But he asks almost the comical question, but how far will that go among so many? You can almost hear the exasperation and the anxiety in his voice. Jesus is asking me to feed this crowd. There's more than 5,000 here, five loaves and two fish. Are you having a laugh? But just like the little girl and the shoelaces, these disciples didn't stop to think whose company they were in. They didn't just have five loaves and two fish. They had five loaves, two fish and Jesus. The one who spoke and the storm ceased. The one who raised the dead and turned the water into wine. The one who healed the sick. What the disciples did or didn't have was neither the problem or solution. Their greatest solution was Jesus and their biggest problem was they forgot that he was near. Philippians 4 reminds us, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Why should our response be any different to the things that have potential to cause anxiety? Because the Lord is near. Our loving Father is waiting to answer our request for help. And when we release our anxieties, the what ifs, the buts and the maybes to God, surrendering to his will and direction, the task that seemed impossible suddenly becomes possible. And God doesn't just provide and no more. Remember back to the feeding of 5,000, 12 baskets food of food left over, one for each disciple, almost as if they would know that God gives us in abundance. The good news is those problems that cause us difficulties, those anxieties and worries that cause us sleepless nights and disturb our peace. We don't need to deal with them on our own. Scripture tells us to cast all our cares on Christ because he cares for us. Throughout the coming days, as life, slow, as life slowly, hesitantly, and perhaps at times stutteringly gets back into some kind of normality, Know that you can be that gentle person in the room who brings a contagious calm. All you need to do is remember that your sovereign God is near. And so this morning, let us commit ourselves and those we love to his care in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you that you sent your only son into this world to rescue us from sin and death. And more than that, you want to give us life and life in all its fullness. When the weight of anxiety and stress becomes heavy, help us to remember that you are always near. To commit every circumstance to your love, mercy, compassion, guidance and wisdom. Lord, much of our anxiety comes from worrying about others. And so this morning, we hand those situations over to your sovereign will. We pray for our world and every country affected by COVID-19. We lift to you leaders who have difficult decisions to make, frontline workers who put themselves at risk to help others. And we pray especially for countries who do not have adequate health facilities, for the poor and the vulnerable, for those grieving the loss of loved ones, and those through our communities who are bringing words of compassion and extending your arms of love in difficult situations. And Lord, we pray for our leadership here in Northern Ireland. We pray for Stormont, that true peace would be realized, mutual respect would be acknowledged, and that those in authority would rule with fairness love, compassion and wisdom. This morning Lord, we pray for the church worldwide, for churches where your children 
our brothers and sisters suffer persecution and beatings because of their faith in you. For churches where your people must walk many miles to gather with Christian brothers and sisters. And for churches where apathy and complacency are the biggest threat. Lord, restore and heal your church. Set us ablaze again for you. Continuously fill us with your Holy Spirit and equip us to serve others and to worship you in the way in which you desire us to. Give us ears to hear and hearts to follow you. And Lord, we pray for our friends and family, those who we know and love, whose lives are weighed down with anxiety and worry. We acknowledge that some of it is caused by their own poor decisions, yet some of it is outside of their control. Lord, work in and through those situations, we pray. And help us to be the example of gentleness during anxiety. Help us to be that contagious calm in the room so that all may know what it is like to walk in your footsteps. In your precious name we pray. Amen. We conclude our worship this morning by singing the wonderful hymn of testimony. It is well with my soul.
As you go into this week, may you be the contagious calm to those you meet and may you find that your anxieties lift as you surrender them to our sovereign God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen.